In recent years, we've become accustomed to a new series of words attached to car make and model names. And there's a new look in car control mechanisms. In these vehicles, one of the pedals has disappeared. But most importantly, a whole new driving technique is with us. We're converting to automatic. The basic components of the automatic transmission car are still the same. The motive power is generated by the engine and engine power is transmitted to the driving wheels. It's the manner of transmission which has changed. Gone is the conventional gearbox and with us is the automatic transmission. Obviously, it's a highly complex mechanism, so let's confine ourselves to basics. There is no clutch in the traditional manner. It has been replaced by a torque converter, which can be demonstrated in this way. The gold electric fan will be turned by its motor when we switch on the power. Now the blue fan begins to turn. It's being driven by the pressure of air forced across its blades by the movement of the gold fan. As the speed of the gold fan is increased, more air is forced onto the blades of the blue fan, increasing its speed of rotation. And that is the principle of the torque converter, which uses oil instead of air. The driving member connected to the car engine the driven member connected through the transmission to the driving wheels of the car. In practice, the torque converter is fully enclosed and is filled with oil. The unit is made more efficient with the addition of a torque multiplier, and very little energy is lost in the operation of this substitute for the conventional clutch. And here's the automatic transmission, the substitute for the manually operated gearbox. Its objective is to transmit engine power applied at this end to the output shaft here, which is connected to the driving wheels of the car. When starting a stationary car or climbing steep hills, we need a fast engine speed to produce a slow, powerful output shaft speed. For normal driving, we need less engine speed to provide a faster output shaft speed. The transmission mechanism produces these changes of ratio, and it produces them automatically as required. Although the engine always turns in the same direction, the output shaft must rotate in the opposite direction when the car is to be driven in reverse. This change of direction is also produced in the transmission mechanism. Unlike the conventional gearbox, the automatic transmission works around a single shaft with all gears in constant mesh. When this brake band is applied, the internal gear is locked and a low ratio of movement is applied to the output shaft. When the band is released and a clutch is applied to lock these planetary gears, a high ratio of movement is applied to the output shaft. When the band is applied and all components of the planetary gears are locked by clutches, the effect, as we can see, is to produce a change in direction of turning on the output shaft. In other words, the car will now travel in reverse. In the automatic transmission, then, gears are not changed. Gear ratios are changed by locking or freeing various components of the mechanism. An exquisitely complex hydraulic system operates the transmission mechanisms. Fortunately, all we need to know is that there are three control centers. The first is connected to the selector control and indicates the driver's wishes to the magic mechanism. The second is connected to the engine manifold and tells the transmission what is the load on the engine at every stage of its operation. And the third control center is a governor on the output shaft of the transmission. This provides information about the road speed of the vehicle. Working together, the three control centers automatically regulate the transmission of engine power to the driving wheels according to engine load and road speed conditions. 
Servicing of the automatic transmission is, of course, a job for an expert. The owner should be able to check the oil level of the automatic transmission. In this car, there is a dipstick located near the engine oil dipstick. How do we take the oil level reading? Do we start the engine first or not? Makes and models vary, so we always check the manufacturer's handbook first. Engine is running. Engine oil dipstick. Automatic transmission dipstick. and the level is right. With all other items checked in the usual way, we're ready to try the new experience of driving the automatic. As an experienced driver, the pre-starting routines come quite naturally before we even start the engine. The handbrake is on. We check it. And this is particularly important when driving the automatic transmission car. We adjust the seat, Driving position is comfortable and all controls are reached easily and naturally. Proper rear vision is essential. The interior and the exterior driving mirrors are adjusted. Vision ahead and to the sides is good. All door locks are checked. The seat belt is fastened and adjusted across the hip. We check that the selector is in the P, the parked position. This is the safest position for starting the engine of an automatic transmission vehicle. We recheck the handbrake and switch on the ignition. There is enough fuel, oil light is working, generator light is working. Temperature light will only glow if the engine overheats. This car has an automatic choke. The maker's handbook explains how to use it. Here, the accelerator is depressed to the floor and gently raised. We start the engine, waiting during the brief warm-up period for oil to circulate. And we're ready to drive away. We move the automatic transmission control from the P position to the D position. With the car stationary, the lowest ratio is selected automatically. We check rear vision mirrors, signal with the indicators, and release the handbrake. The car has begun to creep forward on its own. This will happen with automatic cars, with the selector in D, the handbrake off, and the engine running at a fast idle. When, for instance, the choke is in operation with a cold engine. The solution is simple. We'll try it again. Engine is running at a fast idle. Handbrake is on. Selector is in P, we move it to D. We check mirrors and make our signal. Before releasing the handbrake, we apply the foot brake using the right foot. And this holds the car until the moment when we're ready to move. Check the mirrors. It's all clear. Release the foot brake. The car begins to move. Apply light pressure to the accelerator and we're driving the automatic transmission car. There's no need to change gears. The automatic transmission will do that for us. The ratios will change when indicated by road speed and engine load. It's as simple as that. We decide to stop. It's only a matter of lifting the right foot from the accelerator, moving it to the foot brake and braking in the normal way. The car stops. The engine continues to idle. To move off again, we check mirrors, make a signal, take the foot off the brake and accelerate gently. For short stops, there's no need to change the selector out of the D position. In fact, it's a good idea to leave the control in the D position for all forward driving, at least until we've become thoroughly familiar with the vehicle. In some circumstances, we may wish to change to a lower gear while travelling at a moderate road speed. This can be done by the use of kickdown. The accelerator is depressed sharply, which has the effect of overriding other controls and prompting the transmission to change to a lower ratio. 
It's a useful device for occasions when greater acceleration is required, for instance, when overtaking. Alternatively, we may move the selector to a lower range position. This immediately prompts the automatic transmission to change to a lower ratio and to remain in that range irrespective of an increased road speed. Because the transmission remains in the low ratio, we have a useful device for using the braking power of the engine for steep descents or approaching hazards in the correct gear according to the system of car control. To reverse the automatic transmission car presents no extraordinary difficulties. We stop the car, foot off the accelerator, ease on the brakes. The selector is in the D position. Engine is idling, the car is being held stationary by the foot brake. Instead of forward drive, we want reverse. The car, of course, must be absolutely stationary before we set the selector to R. The road behind is clear. We release the foot brake and apply gentle acceleration. To stop, foot off the accelerator and apply the foot brake. Let's go over the controls in detail. And we'll do that with the handbrake on and the engine off. We have two pedals, accelerator and brake. The right foot is always used for accelerator and for applying the foot brake. Once the car has actually stopped, an experienced driver may at times use the left foot on the brake pedal, particularly when maneuvering in a confined space. Here's the selector, the device which finally proves who is really driving this automatic car. P is for park. It locks the transmission so the car cannot move we always make sure the selector is at P when starting the engine. R for reverse. No problems there, so long as we remember that the car must be absolutely stationary before we select the R position. N is neutral. We use it when the car is stationary for longish periods with the engine running. D for drive. This is the position which the driver selects to instruct the automatic transmission to think for itself. In D, the transmission will change its ratios according to road speed and engine load. L position engages the low ratio. The automatic transmission will not move to high ratio irrespective of road speed and engine load. We engage L to use the braking power of the engine on long, steep descents. L is useful also if we're climbing a long, steep hill with many sharp bends. And we can use L to approach a traffic hazard in the correct gear according to the system of car control. In D position, we can prompt the automatic transmission to engage low ratio by kick down, sharply depressing the accelerator. And this manoeuvre we may use when we need extra acceleration, for overtaking, for instance. Let's see how the automatic behaves in normal traffic conditions. We're in a built-up area, speed is about 30. Selector is in D. At the moment, transmission is in high ratio. Hazard ahead is an intersection. We shall turn right. Course is right. Mirrors, clear enough behind. Signal right turn. Brakes. Brakes slightly to reduce speed. Gear and mirrors. Transmission has changed to low ratio automatically. Mirrors, still clear enough behind. Clear ahead and to each side. No evasive action. Begin the turn. Accelerate at A1. All clear ahead, accelerate and the transmission changes to high ratio automatically. As we've seen, the automatic transmission car is perfectly under control when driven to the system. Let's try a hill start. Check the mirrors, all clear behind. We simply pull into the side and apply the foot brake to stop. The selector is in D, the engine is idling. The car is held on a foot brake. Now the hand brake takes over to allow the right foot to use the accelerator. The road behind is clear. As we accelerate, we release the hand brake. And we move off to an easy, expert hill start. The age of the automatic transmission is with us. 
sooner or later most motorists will be driving automatic cars. There are differences from the techniques involved in driving a car with manual gear change, but then there have always been changes in driving technique as car makes and models have changed and evolved. The automatic has only two pedals. The selector control is at first unfamiliar, but a study of the manufacturer's handbook, meticulous application of all the good driving habits we've learned, and a sensible familiarization of the new techniques, with these principles, the good driver will have no problem converting to automatic. 